You don't know what you got till it's gone. This might be true of losing a particular relationship with someone or even a job, but a state boundary? What happens when a state boundary technically gets lost? More specifically, the boundary between North Carolina and South Carolina. To be clear, the whereabouts of our entire state boundary never disappeared, but exact locations of certain segments were a bit of a mystery, that is, until recently. Through a series of events and research that could be straight out of Indiana Jones or National Treasure, it was clarified, but to appreciate the nature of this challenge, you have to rewind 280 years. It all began in 1735 when King George II, who was King of England at the time, ordered surveyors to split the two colonies with two simple lines, one heading northwest from the Cape Fear River to 35 degrees latitude, and the other heading straight across all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Despite these land-hungry orders, the surveyors followed his instructions, up to a certain point. They started where they were instructed to begin, but drove a stake into a meadow of modern-day Scotland County that was 12 miles short of 35 degrees latitude, or the 35th parallel. Perhaps it was a miscalculation, or perhaps they were simply exhausted from navigating the wilderness. Whatever the reason, the 35th parallel was never reached, which consequently shaved 422,000 acres off of what was supposed to be South Carolina. Surveyors continued west from this erroneous stake in 1764, thinking that it was the 35th parallel. But they realized their mistake when they didn't encounter the Catawba Indian Nation, which was actually up here. So in 1772, they decided to mark the boundary in such a way that would compensate South Carolina for the land that it was shorted by proceeding up north past the 35th parallel and around the northern edges of the Catawba Reservation, which they should have encountered in the first place. A few smaller survey projects took place in 1813, 1905, and 1928 to shape up and clarify the boundary, but for the most part, the boundary we know today was finalized in 1815, when the final segment was surveyed. This segment continued west to the Cherokee Indian boundary. From here, the boundary was measured in a straight line to a point called Commissioner's Rock, and you can still see it today. A state boundary established of our own accord, rather than the king's, and so early on in our nation's history is one to be proud of. But a boundary marked in early history is a boundary marked by early technology, namely carvings on trees and in boulders. As these trees died or were cut down for booming towns, the boundary became vague. Time eroded and buried the boulders, and although granite posts were put in place in the early 1900s, even those succumbed to the wear and tear of time and nature. So this weathered boundary is the one that the Carolinas faced in the 1990s, when Duke Energy offered to sell some land along the border to both states for Gorges State Park. North Carolina didn't want to mistakenly buy land that belonged to South Carolina and vice versa, but the trees that the original surveyors marked were long gone. Neither state knew exactly where the boundary fell. Gary Thompson, who presides over the entire North Carolina Geodetic Survey, knew that to solve this dilemma, collaboration with South Carolina was key. We knew it had to be a team effort, so the first thing we did is we contacted our counterparts in South Carolina and put together a plan of how we would approach this. And so, the adventure began. A boundary that was established long ago, but eroded by the sands of time, was slowly being resurrected. Doing this was a fleet of historians, geographers, surveyors, and detectives, digging through old state archives, colonial maps and deeds, as well as implementing geospatial technology and a little bit of informed guesswork. Alex Rankin was among the first to resurvey an ambiguous segment of the boundary, established in 1814 or 15. The 1814 survey in almost every location had a tree as a corner of the uh, state boundary. Well, in 2000, 2001, 2003, when we were resurveying this, we found zero <laughs> of those original trees. 
So how exactly did this team composed from both states find the exact locations of these ancient markers in the field? It's one thing to speculate where they could be, but another to find the evidence. Alan John Zupan was just one of several dedicated individuals from the South Carolina Geodetic Survey responsible for the recovery of historic records of a number of boundary points that otherwise could have remained a mystery. One of these records was a 17-foot-long plat of the 1815 survey. Zupan wasn't permitted to remove the plat from the state archives, so he spent weeks tracing it by hand on a plastic sheet. With newfound information such as this, members of both state geodetic surveys were able to uncover early artifacts of the original state boundary, or, according to Alex, historic treasure. To me, uh, the practice of surveying is like taking a treasure map and finding buried treasure. And never has that experience been more intense than when we were reconning the state line, we got to an area where the, the field notes from the original survey said that the line ran between two boulders, one marked North Carolina and one marked South Carolina. We look and you can see an old road that runs between a couple boulders. So I'm on one boulder and the boulders have uh, leaf litter and root mat about that thick. And so I've got a machete slowly peeling this carpet back from the top of one boulder. And on the other side of the state line, Gary Thompson's got a bush axe peeling it back from his. And Gary starts yelling, I found it! I found it! I found it! So on his boulder, it said SC 1825. So I'm just chopping harder on mine and got it back to where I could see NC on mine. And that was the, the I, all of us that were there that day will recall that for the rest of our professional careers. I mean, that is just the epitome of why we do what we do. Through discoveries such as these, the state boundary was slowly but surely clarified. But there was still a long road ahead, although work on the ground was completed. As a result of the survey, 21 residences changed states altogether, and 53 residences were split by the newly discovered boundary. A joint boundary commission, which was composed of members from the North Carolina and South Carolina Geodetic Survey, sent letters to any landowners who they felt might be impacted by the resurvey. Legislation that will mediate the effects of such changes with regard to things like taxes, voting, school districts, emergency providers, and utilities should be effective early 2016. And how can we guarantee that 200 years from now a lost boundary won't be an issue again? Alex Rankin says that with today's technology, it shouldn't be a problem. Today, we have aerial photography, we have GIS, and we have GPS. So that we have a worldwide reference network of coordinates that we can then put on a very accurate geo-referenced photograph. And from that photograph, we can refer to any areas around. And those coordinates, once determined, don't change. You know, it's, a, it's a North Carolina grid or a South Carolina grid, and that translates into latitude and longitude, and it never moves. So once we have established this line and determined those coordinates, those coordinates are a permanent record of where those points are. And from anywhere in the world, you can go on a GIS site and look and see where that line is and what relates to it, what properties relate to it, what buildings. So it's a, it's a permanent record in a way that the map from 200 years ago could not be. It's safe to say that our newly established boundary is here to stay, which stands as a testament to the benefit of teamwork, cooperation, and dedicated research. For more information about the South Carolina and North Carolina Geodetic Survey, visit ncgs.state.us and rfa.sc.gov geodetic.